Hello, and today I'm pretty excited to begin talking about the introduction of the music and ministry life cycle. Um, this is part one. My name is Dr. Laura Thompson, and I am from AMC World. Okay, so when we think of the initial stages of ministry, we have to think of a few significant moments um, that could happen in an individual's life. Um, a person could experience loss, they could experience death, financial issues, and those things can also bring about a level of questioning about significance. So when we think of loss, sometimes loss is in the form of financial loss. It could be um, a divorce, it could be um, theft, a loss of a friend, um, a loss of a job. I uh, remember there was a time where I had lost a job because of an injury and that pretty much birthed um, something new in my life which ended up being um, uh, the opportunity to actually teach other people to play music. Um, death can, can cause things to come up in an individual's life getting them to reevaluate uh, life in general. Um, financial, there could be some financial challenges both good and bad. Um, most times we think of financial challenges as a bad thing, but what happens when you make a tremendous amount of money? Uh, how, how does that propel you into ministry? And then being able to find the significance in all of that. What is your level of significance in these stages of life? And this is something that we deal with with this book. Uh, when, when thinking about an example, I tend to go back to Paul and in the book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 2, uh, it says, While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Separate for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. And so when a person is going through some aspect of uh, just trying to find a significance and they've, maybe they've experienced some loss or some setback, some, some death or financial challenge, it does separate you automatically from the norm and from what other people are going through. So Paul and Barnabas are excellent examples of folks that have been separated for work which they were called to do. Uh, the King James verse is, a Version says, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work to which I have called them. And so it's important to be able to minister, to know how to minister to the Lord. Uh, and so that's praying, that's meditating, that's speaking in your holy language and fasting and just giving some consecration time to the Holy Spirit so that He can guide and direct you into a level of significance. We see two other examples in the scripture where this separation has occurred. Uh, David's David uh, tended to spend a lot of time with what we have been knowing, knowing as the sheep. But it's during those times of separation that he began to really see God in a very special way. So that by the time he was separated to the work he was called to do, he was ready. Because he had spent time ministering to the Lord while he was tending the sheep. Joseph also is another individual who had been separated first from his family. And then from Potiphar's house into the jail. And then um, from some of the people in the jail he was separated again. And then he ended up going into the um, the palace from the jail uh, and during it's during those times of separation that you get to see and notice your level of significance in jail that's when uh, the the butler and the and the um, the cook noticed or the baker noticed that Joseph had this knack for dreams and being able to interpret what the dreams meant so um, your significance can come in some of the most uh, obscure places in life and it's some it's it, it's a good thing to separate yourself uh, especially if the Lord has something for you to do okay so with that we're gonna go and deal with the first assignment that's in the text it deals with loss and separation and this seems kind of new and kind of quick but um, it's good for us to kinda strike while the iron is hot in this assignment you're gonna be required to write a paragraph describing the forces that drive you to keep going Think of a time before the age of 12 where you were given something to do or you were driven to do something. Um, describe the event. What, what were the driving forces that enabled you to do the thing that uh, you wanted to do? Uh, 
give some definitions and and some descriptions. Was the force internal? Was it external? What was the enabling factor um, that caused you to do the thing that you were driven to do? And how did you feel at the end? What was the sense of accomplishment that you had once you did what you did? Um, at times, we we find that there it's it's early on in life that we have these opportunities to do great things, and maybe we didn't notice that it happened as a result of loss and or separation, or there was a separation time involved in order for it to come to fruition. So just take this time, get a pen and a piece of paper, or get your computer out, get your iPad, get your cell phone, and actually just begin writing a paragraph that describes these forces that kept you going. And just think of the time before you know you were 12 and you were, driven, you were driven to do something. What was the event that you were driven to do? It could have been a school project. It could have been something at home. Um, it could have been building a toy airplane or um, learning how to play all the keys um, in one afternoon. What was the driving force? Describe that driving force. How did you feel at the end and what was the sense of accomplishment you had? And we'll be right back at you.